Now coming to question number 56, it is on terms related to space technology. Often you can see questions related to terms in space technology. The question is about pairing the, the, whether the terms are rightly paired, right? It talks about cephides, nebula and pulsars. These are the terms you often hear in news. You keep uh, hearing about pulsars in the newspapers. Nebula, of course, is a very basic term. In order to understand this, in order to uh, uh, attempt this question, you should know the life cycle, uh, cycle of a star. If you know anything about life cycle of a star, you know the birthplace of any star is a nebula. Nebula is basically a, a, a cloud of gas and dust, right? More and more clouds of gas and dust, more and more dust and gas accumulates. Okay, due to gravity, they... Uh, the, the, the temperature of, of that gas and cloud increases as a result of which it triggers a nuclear fusion. The temperature is enough because of the gravity. More and more particles have come together. The temperatures have increased as a result of which the nuclear fusion starts. The definition of any star basically is what? A nuclear fusion reactor. Right? Now depending on and, and if you look at the life cycle of a star, depending on the mass of the star, the life cycle varies. If the mass of the star, which is basically given by Chandrasekhar a limit, right? If the mass of the star is about 1.44 solar mass or 1.44 times the mass of the sun, it becomes a white dwarf at its death. What is really happening in the life cycle of a star? A star basically like our sun, our sun is an average star, right? The nuclear fusion happens in the core of the star, like what is happening in our present day sun. Once the nuclear fu fusion stops, meaning which the fuel for nuclear fusion ends. As a result, I mean, I, I mean to say, the amount of hydrogen that is there in the core of the star is depleted. The, the, the nuclear fusion in the core stops, okay, as a result of which the star is based, the, the fusion stops. The, gra the, the, the core of the star is collapsing in, in its gravity as a result of which it is increasing the temperature around the core. As a result of this, the star becomes a red giant. Increasing the temperature around the core pushes everything away as a result of increasing temperature. As a result, it becomes a red giant. The core which is basically depleted of nuclear fusion or uh, uh, nuclear fuel like hydrogen, as a re right? that is becoming a white dwarf okay if the on the other hand if the if the mass of the star is more than 1.5 times the mass of sun or 1.5 times the solar mass it becomes a red supergiant red supergiant and the the pressure in the core becomes so high because of collapse of gravity it results in a supernova event Okay, the pressure is very, very high and therefore a supernova event occurs and the leftover core is what is called as a neutron star or a black hole. If the mass of the star is about 1.5 to 3 times the solar mass, it becomes a neutron star. If it is more than 3 times the solar mass, it becomes a black hole. Now, this is in brief the life cycle of a star. So what is the question that is asked? The question that is asked here if you see, okay, what is a pulsar? A pulsar is the, the leftover core of a neutron star. That is what it is, right? So uh, option number three is rightly paired. So this is all right. Nebula is, is, is just a gas cloud or a cloud of gas and dust, which is basically here. It is not rightly paired. Okay, and what UPSC generally does, okay, this is a trick you can probably use, okay, it is, it is, it is, it, it basically flips the pairs, whenever it is basically giving you wrong pairs, it flips the options. So, nebula is basically gas clouds and what are cephides? Cephides are basically those stars, there are some stars in, in, in the sky, okay, whose luminosity keeps changing periodically, meaning, Okay, it shines brighter and dimmer periodically, right? These are used as standard benchmarks in order to measure the luminosity of other stars. 
now this varying luminosity talks about the distance of okay in in fact in fact in the in the early 1900s it was there, there there was a scientist who basically discovered established a relationship between the luminosity and the distance of the stars so in order to measure the distance from the earth distance of a star from the earth we use these cepheids or variable stars cepheid variables we call them as standard candles or standard benchmarks okay so cepheids are basically what a star okay that is what they have done they have flipped it so therefore the right option is a one only